Hey guys, it's Abby from Ultimate Panel, and today I am talking about the worst and most disappointing books I read in 2020. So there are going to be five books on this list. It's a combination of ones that were just shit and ones that just didn't live up to what I wanted. Disclaimer, if you liked it, whatever, let's get into the books. I've either unhauled or packed away all of these books because why would I want them out? So they're going to be in picture form. I'm so sorry editing. So the first book is Elizabeth is Missing by Emma Healy and I just hated this book. I ended up giving it three stars because on Goodreads because I can imagine that somebody else would like it but I just really didn't. <clears throat> so this is about an old woman who is losing her memory as she ages and she is convinced that her friend is missing. She doesn't know where her friend has gone. It flashes back and forwards in time between her when she was younger and her when she's as an old lady. When she was younger her sister went missing. I believe in like mysterious circumstances, concern, probably dead sort of situation and then when she's older she's convinced that her friend has had that happen to her. She's like melding the two memories together. And so we follow the two different timelines for Elizabeth and see her and we see her getting confused and not knowing what's going on and her family members getting very frustrated with her. It is a very interesting book, like I'm gonna be honest, it's really really interesting. It really opened my eyes to... it sounds stupid but like the common sense of how it must be so disorientating for this to be happening when you are the one it's happening to. I'm very lucky to still have one of my grandmothers and she is on the older side and something less dramatic is happening to her. I get annoyed and I shouldn't. So this was good in that way, that's part of the reason it gave me three stars is because it definitely made me think, it definitely made me kind of reevaluate some things which is always good, but the writing when it wasn't like kind of explicitly about this relationship that you need to have with your all the family members was just kind of eh. I preferred the bits back in time, the stuff in the present day was just boring and anticlimactic. It was a struggle to push through it. Like for me, just the book, two stars, but because it made me think I gave it another star. So I read that for the Thrillerathon in February and also for the Thrillerathon I read Watching Eddie by Camilla Way. I don't know. This I picked up from Poundland in 2015 for one pound and it sounded decent, it sounded pretty good and I'll be honest the actual writing in this book was pretty decent, I was pretty invested in the plot. This one is about a young woman who is navigating through life, she ended up leaving her small hometown where something happened when she was younger and she's now in like her my age-ish like early to mid 20s and her old life is catching up with her. So this does the same thing as Elizabeth is missing bouncing backwards and forwards. Now I'm fine with that as a concept, just to establish that, because apparently I don't like it in these two books. And I really was actually enjoying this book. I enjoyed the moments back in time, they were written really well, the thing that happened wasn't what I expected, which is always great in a thriller. It wasn't too far out there, but it also was still something that I didn't click onto before it happened. I loved the way that it made you think about all of the different individual characters, this stuff, once again in the present day, it was less interesting for me, but I did still enjoy it and I did still like seeing how the characters who we brought forward had developed. But at the same time, there was a plot twist near the end that was horrendous. Like, absolutely horrendous. I remember I commented on... My voice is going. I commented on Emma's video from Drinking By My Shelf and saying that I was going to read this for the thriller thought she was like, I hated it. I was like, well, hopefully... <coughs> hopefully I'll disagree. <laughs> I didn't disagree. And it was actually, once I read it, I went back and was like, was it this? Yes, it was that. We both didn't like the same bit. For me, at least, the writing was really well done. I did really enjoy the base story, especially the back in time stuff. I mean, I say enjoy if you've read it. It's a thriller, but like, I was into it. And then, yeah, that twist. No. Just no. 
Next up is one that's going to make Olivia cry, and that is Othello by William Shakespeare. <laughs> so I will say that even just watching Olivia talk about Shakespeare has made me less hateful towards this book, but I just didn't like it. So Othello is about a black man in the Roman army, maybe the Greek, I don't know. Basically around a lot of like white Mediterranean people. And he is married or betrothed or with this lass that somebody else wants is essentially like how it starts and then kind of shit rolls out of control and he tries to do things to get this woman to leave Othello and ruin his reputation and screw everything up. Now that I've had a lot of time to separate from it, I think it's okay, but at the time I was reading it I just couldn't force myself through. I've read Shakespeare before, it's not as though this is like me being completely unused to the writing style and not being able to read in that kind of 1600s English within a play setting. It isn't that, because I've read the other ones and I'm fine with the other ones. I just couldn't get through this story at all. But like I said, since Olivia has talked about it more and just in Shakespeare in general, and this is actually one of her favourites, <laughs> sorry. So I am up for trying it in another manner. I don't think reading it again right now is ideal, maybe in the future, but I think watching an adaptation could be really good, so I need to find one that I know will tick my boxes. There are certain things for adaptations that I like, and I'm sure there's been more than one for this, so I need to go find an adaptation and sit and watch that, and then hopefully I'll enjoy the story. But this just wasn't for me. I didn't like the style of writing, which makes no sense because I like Shakespeare, I didn't like how the action happened. There's a lot of the miscommunication trope used in here and I'm sure it works on the stage a lot better than it works on paper. So I wasn't really enjoying that. It's just not, it's not a thing. And these next two books are definitely in the disappointing pile. So the first one is Fire Song by William Nicholson. This is the third book in the Wind on Fire? Windsinger? Windsinger trilogy. A. Hey. I think. So this is the third book in the trilogy. I got these books when I was really little. I should have read them at the time. I would have enjoyed them much, much more. But as an adult, the series as a whole is still all right. But I gave this three stars. The first book I struggled through, the second book I adored, and this third book I was really hoping that it was just going to keep amping up, but it just kind of annoyed me. Obviously I can't tell you too much about the story because it's the third book, but for the first book we are following twins who can contact within their minds, and other people in their community also, some of them, also do have things like this, their mum can see into the future, things like that and it is basically them overthrowing kind of a dystopian society where people aren't trek great and the series progresses from there. This last book I just there was a lot of misogynistic ideologies that were included and I was less invested in the characters than I was in the second one which is unfortunate because we carried a lot of the characters from book two into book three and I really enjoyed them in book two I just really wasn't as keen on them in book three. There were aspects I enjoyed, the development of the kind of more magical side, the development of that side a little further I really enjoyed, and there is a journey in this one, and I was I was enjoying the journey, I thought that was done well, but that it just, it didn't hit the mark. It was just disappointing. And my last disappointing book of 2020 was Good Me Bad Me by Ali Land. This is a thriller book and the concept for this book in the synopsis is that we're following, following a young girl who turned her mother into the authorities because she was torturing and murdering children, definitely murdering, can't remember if it was torturing, and she has now been placed with a foster family and we are following this young girl. We get a little bit of a mixture of her new name and her old name because of course she changed her name for her identity and for her privacy. I need a drink. And we follow her settling in with this new foster family, with the disagreements with her new foster sister, with the different developmental processes and how she's settling into this new school, this new environment. She's been put with an upper class 
foster family whereas she came from working class with her mum so that's a big difference there so she there's a lot of like oh wow I'm just kind of getting a laptop what is this I liked that I liked that it wasn't just like her adjusting and thinking that was now normal because that wouldn't happen and I did enjoy the book but the first 80% of it was not what the synopsis says it just isn't and then the last 20% is what the synopsis said. And that sounds like, oh great, it, it delivered. No, no, it was like two different books. It didn't really make sense. The first was more of a like contemporary standard fiction of like a girl who had to turn in her mother, who is now learning to adjust. And then there's just a switch that isn't done well. It should have been, in my opinion, like progressed through the book. There should have been more hints left throughout, like breadcrumb trails left. I think that was breadcrumbs. And there wasn't, and it was just... And although I did enjoy the two separate parts, it was the fact that they didn't gel, the fact that the majority of the book didn't match the synopsis. It was just so disappointing. I gave it three stars. Both bits were written well. I did enjoy it when I was reading it. I read it all in one sitting. It just was not what I wanted and I can point out how the author could have done it better, so I'm very sorry, Ali Land. <laughs> I will say as well that for the four of these authors that might still be alive, I don't know, I haven't checked, but I know Shakespeare isn't, I would probably give other books from them a shot. This is just my personal opinion, I know a lot of people love Fire Song. it's the culmination of a series that a lot of people loved, so I wouldn't suggest not trying the series, especially if it's for a younger reader, it is aimed at middle grade. So if you're thinking of getting it for someone in that age bracket, 100% go for it. These all had redeeming qualities, don't get me wrong, they all had qualities where I was like, you know what, alright. I mean, Othello didn't, but over time I'm like, okay, I can see why this would be, like, good on a stage. So these are the worst books or the most disappointing books for me in 2020. Let me know down below in the comments if you had any as well, and for any authors who have gotten this far into the video, why are you watching? This isn't for you. If you saw the discourse on book Twitter about Gavin from uh, How to Train Your Gavin, he posted this video, like most of us do. I don't always do them because I tend to just not think about my worst books, but I made an effort to do it this year. But loads of booktubers do this video, and some authors who weren't even mentioned in the video, let alone were in the age bracket, that he was mentioning, because he didn't mention any middle grade, were complaining that he made negative reviews. If you actually watch the video, I now want to pick a couple of them up. So that's just bullshit, so of course I have to join in. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in my next video where I will be talking a little bit more positively about the books I'm reading. <laughs> Thank you for watching, bye!